Hey, what's going on? Welcome back. So, the Need More series. <laughs> uh, oh, yes. So, we've been reading some of the comments. So, we're going to go over some questions we've seen. Some of the questions were, did you guys clean the barrels before you took them out to the ranch? Yes, we did. As you should. Doesn't matter if it's a, you know, factory or you have somebody... You pay somebody to rebarrel it for you. Always rule of thumb, clean it yourself, make sure everything's out of there. Uh, did we bore scope them? Yes. Yes, we did. How did they look? They looked like a barrel. <laughs> so, I mean, they weren't horrendous looking. No, like nothing, like no scratches, nothing that would, you know, if it was a competition barrel or something like that, be like, yep, yeah, not gonna use this one. Right. You know, they looked, um, you know, decent, like right. ready to go. Oh, uh, did we torque the action screws? Yep, they were all checked. Well, they were tight. tight. So the problem, <laughs> the problem with plastic stocks is you can't really torque them. I mean, you just get them tight, but they're plastic, right? So you can torque them, but technically What's they're gonna, gonna they're gonna they're gonna get loose again because plastic. plastic. <laughs> uh, triggers, we left them as they were. We tried to adjust them and. It's just don't waste your time. Uh, what else did we? Uh, <laughs> why do we call it the Need More series? Because they obviously <laughs> need more. Uh, now that's not saying they're not. You know, it, it depends on your purpose, right? We're trying to get them to shoot as tight as possible, so obviously we uh, we need more than uh, SPS. Uh, SPS is pretty much the cheapest Remington you can buy, and that's what we did. Uh, you know, why didn't we try a different brand? I, I, we've been getting those questions a lot. Well, maybe later we will. Right now, we decided to start with Remington's, and that's what we did. And uh, this, this, this is what came up first. So. Yeah, <laughs> I mean Remington is uh, most custom actions are based on the Remington 700. Uh, the other beauty about a Remington 700 is. Let's say, you know, as you guys can see, we already upgraded number two, which originally didn't shoot well. So we're going to go see how it shoots. But uh, we bought a chassis for it. That's an Oryx chassis. Very good for the price. But uh, if we decide to uh, build a full custom with a custom action and everything, well, we can use that chassis because, you know, it's around 700. So... That's the main reason uh, for going with the 700. Uh, what else? Did you see any other comments? No, that covers about the, the majority of them right uh, there. Oh! Scope height. Oh, scope height. There were some people that were very mad about that. <laughs> about how high they are. Can you tell them why they're that high? Uh, they, it is, we went, this is actually, for the MDT, this is their lowest mount. All right, so scope height, if, if you want to go into the weeds with it, that's cool. It's an argument you don't need to have. Um, the height over bore should be um, corrected for in your ballistics app, and, and, and all is good. It's about shooter comfort more than, shooter comfort matters more than the height right. of the scope. Well, they were saying they're board. so high that you never get comfortable. Well, we never intended to keep these stocks anyway. Yeah. So we're going to go to chassis. The chassis has a cheek uh, rest. And of course, with that height, if you decide to put a, a bigger barrel, it clears everything. So it's mainly a long term plan that if we were to build one of these to the max, you're going to want that Definitely. scope to be that high anyway. So, but like he said, these are the uh, these tactical mounts. Uh, Look at this thing bounce. <laughs> they, you know, uh, they're beefy, but yeah, I mean, they work. They work well. Anyway, enough of that. Uh, what do you expect for? Uh, oh, obviously, we put that one in an Oryx chassis. Uh, nothing else. We did nothing else. Put in an Oryx, and that's it. That's it. It drops right in. Uh, now we have a magwell. Yes. Now we, we can do. use magazines. Uh, you have adjustable cheek rest. So all kinds of goodies that happen pretty quick. Uh, also, we had a, we have an Arca rail now. 
So now we can use the better chest, uh, the better bipods, and you can adjust it back and forth wherever you want it. So uh, this thing got really good really fast just by adding this Oryx chassis. Uh, this is the number one. This is the one that didn't shoot very well. This is number two. This one shot better. So what we decided to do is we pillar bedded it and free floated the barrel. But uh, we just figured, trying to make it as consistent as possible. We know it's the control. We said we weren't going to do anything, but that's kind of the typical thing where somebody would get started with and pillar bedding. <sighs> Anyway, honestly, if you buy one of these, plan on throwing the stock away immediately. That's, that's the best thing you can do. But if you do want to do something to it, pillar bed it. Glass bedding is a nightmare because you're trying to attach to plastic. So it's hard to get it to stick. Anyway, enough of that. Anything else? No, nope, that's it. It's time to shoot it. All right, let's go to the range. Uh, actually, it's about 110 degrees out there. So. Uh, Something just came up. How about you go to the range? <laughs> and I'll stick around here in the 70 degree weather. <laughs> I'm used to it. It's yeah. all good. All right. Jason's going to go to the range. Hell yeah. And we'll have the result shortly when it gets back. Bye bye. All right. Here is rifle number two, the control rifle. I'm going to throw five rounds to get it warmed up. And then I will shoot two groups of five rounds. And then I'll shoot the modified one and compare. So I had an average of 20, uh, 2,712 feet per second, uh, extreme spread of 13, and SD is 6.2 for five shots. Uh, give it a, a moment, let it cool down a bit, and then I'll fire the second group. Okay, two groups are done. This is rifle two, this is the control rifle. All we did to this is we uh, pillar and bedded the stock, made the bo uh, barrel free float and that's it. Let's see what we got for. So for this um, average was 27, uh, 22 feet per second, extreme spread of 24, and a standard deviation of 9.8. The five rounds for fouling, checking zero. We'll go from there. All right. So the box that I'm using for the Fowler shots is new and the ammo that I'm about to shoot is the same ammo that I shot uh, the first time right here. Shot four, shot five, way. Uh, way better, way better than last time. Like, a whole lot better. 
This we put it in an Oryx chassis. Yeah, it's doing its job. So extreme spread of 28 with a standard deviation of 11.6. And then we have an average muzzle velocity of 2676. All right, there we go. 55 extreme spread, 19.5 standard deviation, average of 2701, uh, 20, uh, 2701 feet per second. How'd it go? Well, it went. <laughs> it went. Okay, so these are fowlers. These are just fowlers. Uh, three shots each. No, no, five. That's five? Yep. This is five? Out of uh, gun number one. That's... So how excited were you? Because this is... It was what? We said for him away on the last video, but after that close hold? inspection. Yeah, we got the targets. Holy smoke. I'm excited already. It was three and a half MOA. It was actually three and a half MOA of after uh, inspection. Yeah. So that, that's what comparing. it, so it went from here, I'm, I'm, these are just fowlers, so I'm just going to ignore this one for now, yep. and go to the real targets. So let's start with our control gun, number two. You kind of already let the cat out of it, but, alright, control gun, it shot what last time? Uh, well, we were kind of between three quarters. It, it shot inch. a one inch, like an inch and a quarter group, because it had that one flyer, yeah. and it's the same, there's, there's a flyer. Outside well, of the group, I don't think it's everywhere. it's out. I think that's just the group. It could be. And I mean, then you look. So this this is the first group, and this is the second group. And you know the water line came in on the second group, and, and I think the the spread, the horizontal spreads, uh, more on me uh, not being comfortable on that. Time. Well, it is hard to get comfortable on this thing. I mean, you know, but. Okay, well, you already let the cat out of that. Let's look at the other one. So, all right. Now, here's our one that didn't want to shoot at all. Wow. So, obviously, getting rid of the stock was a big, huge, big improvement. I mean, that's the only thing that we did was change the stock. And we went from a three and a half inch group to an inch and a half group. So, this is still inch and a half? Yep. And now, both guns now are shooting the same. They, those are inch and a half groups as well. So they're both shooting one and a half MOA. Yep. So even though it's much better, it's still not great. Needs more. Needs more. <laughs> well, I mean, there you have it. Uh, now, shooter comfort. So I, the biggest thing that I noticed, I fired our control gun first, um, five Fowlers, and then um, five round group, took a break, five round group. Did that for both both guns. Um, and what I noticed... Well, before you go further, when you say you took a break, how long of a break? Oh, like a minute, minute and a half. A okay. Uh, the reason I asked that, a lot of people want to shoot at one shot and wait a minute and shoot another shot. And oh, wait no, a no, 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 no. Like, I, like the, the five, the groups were shot. And, you know, bam, well, bam, I, well, bam. The reason I'm asking that is... Uh, there's no need to wait a minute in between shots. No. They're, they're, I think it's harder to shoot small groups that way. Yeah. It, it, I mean, this goes into like your follow through. If, if you if you have proper follow through, your recoil management, everything like that, you should be ready to pop off that next shot as soon as you get done working your bolt and, and right. get your sight picture again. And, and that's how I shoot. You know how I shoot. Right? I got my follow through and if I'm ready for that second shot, I'm going to pull the trigger. Mm -hmm. And that's how I shot the groups. Um, it was the, my, the break, if you will, was in between, you know, the five round groups. Right. So I, you know, would shoot five and just come off the gun, give myself a break mm -hmm. and, and then maybe a minute, maybe two minutes. And then loaded five, well for this it was nice because I loaded the magazine <laughs> right. and, uh, you know, fired the next group. So why did we pick the Oryx? Uh, I mean... Chassis, that is a, re you actually tested that before on your 647 with your custom action, mm -hmm. and that thing just shot great. 
Yep, I did uh, with the with, with my 647. I did the complete workup on this chassis, and was I was not expecting the results that we got off that. It, it did really good. Um, but it kind of gave a, 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 a prelude to what happened here, where you know, and oh, one of the comments yeah, it just popped in my head that um, why are the groups on this gun so big with the other chassis? I tried my best to shoot bug holes with both of these guns. There's oh, no they, they kind of were hinting that that you purposely that I pulled made that. Them, you purposely yeah. made them big. <laughs> no, I, I got no. There's absolutely no. <laughs> yeah, reason trust me. For us to do none that. of us want to have our name next to a three and a half MOA group at 100 yards. No, 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 no. <laughs> that, that's that's painful. It makes me cringe. Um, All right. So obviously that was a really good upgrade. Mm -hmm. Totally worth the money. Totally worth it. What are they like? 500 bucks about 500 bucks with the arca rail somewhere yeah. around the neighborhood so but the so you're pretty much going to double the price of the rifle immediately yep right now having shot both would you say that's a worthwhile expense even even the, what i'm getting at if your rifle shot this good right mm -hmm. just the comfort and the mag being able to feed from a bag, being able to have a Arca rail, is it worth the price to just go ahead and get the chassis right off the bat or should you just kind of live with this? I, I would say if you're gonna buy an off the shelf rifle, then you need to factor in the cost of an aftermarket chassis with it as well immediately. Yeah, yeah. like you I said, we, these stocks, uh, they, they're, <laughs> we, uh, full disclosure, we, we I, I'm not gonna drag you into this. I thought, you know what, we should bet them both, pillar bet them, bet them both, and then let that be the ne next upgrade. <laughs> oh, what a nightmare. Betting these things, it's just such a nightmare. Like, it's not even worth it. The amount of betting you put in, in the stock is worth more than the stock itself, so just don't waste your time. Just get your chassis. This is a very good one. Uh, but anyway, uh, what's next? I mean, uh, obviously, so obviously, it needs more. It does. Like, it needs both, more. Well, both of them do. So, what's next after shooting? That this is a great, great um, session. Uh, this gun still jumped a lot. Um, recoil management. I mean, it's not like I felt it coming into my shoulder or anything. It just jumped. Yeah. Um, just, just so you guys know, those that have been keeping up with it, this is what we're shooting out of it. Burger ammunition 130 grain so it's quality stuff uh yeah but we're getting in you know one and a half MOA. so the control gun still still jumped was that one better this one did and the biggest difference is the recoil management it was all directional coming back at me and you know i felt it it's like there's no brake there's no muzzle device on this i mean all that force is coming to the rear and it was coming to the rear. The, 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 how solid, it, now the complete system, everything working together is just solid and coming back. Then you got this where it's not a complete system. It's, it's, it's like it's, mounting a barrel action to a it's spring. It's the dispersion of forces <laughs> going everywhere and it bounces. <laughs> it's like, I mean, this thing is pretty springy. Yep. Okay, having said that, I know we said this would be the control gun. Would it be a better control gun if we threw it in a chassis as well? Oh yeah, is it, like the next recommend, like we need to thread this and put a tuner brake on it and then tune out the airs and, so, and then get some more recoil management going for us. What I'm getting at is, should we put a chassis on this one as well? Well, we should because that's not going to be able to compete with this one anymore. You think, well, they're already the same. When, uh, we thread this, put a, a tuner brake on it, it's going to outshoot that. So we, we don't technically, what's the control? It's already better. We're done with this gun. Well, it's the same at this point, and that's my point. Now it's the same, but you say you, you enjoy shooting that one much better oh, yeah. than this one. Definitely. Even though they both shoot the same, which one would you rather shoot? This one. Okay. It's more comfortable. Okay, that's my point. Do we, at this point, maybe uh, put a tuner brake on that one and, and a chassis on this one and see how they do? Yep. Uh, let's donate that stock. To the to trash who? can. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's gonna want it. Um, okay. What do you guys think? Should we start upgrading this one already? I mean, it seemed like 
It's just such a nightmare to shoot. It, it's it's not pleasant. Okay. It can be done, but it, it's. But what if my the reason I ask is what if you we put a chassis in this one all of a sudden it, you're getting sub MOA. Well, That's we'll find out either way. We'll find out. We'll start. We'll put a tuner brake on that one, and we'll put a chassis another Oryx just like that one mm -hmm. on this one. At what point do we do triggers? I mean that. How okay now? Now that you have a good system, do we do brake or trigger first? Mm, man, that is a good question. Is it? Well, well, I guess we'll do brake. Let's keep the triggers the same for now. Yeah, for now, keep the triggers the same. Install a tuner brake. Go from there. All right. That's the next step. That's the next step. <laughs> All right. Next episode. We'll throw this one in a Oryx chassis and we'll put a tuner brake on that one and see how they do. All right, predictions. Uh, I mean, this is pretty impressive already. It's still one and a half MOA, but I'm, I'm just saying the, the difference. Obviously that stock, a ton of people said you need to have the pressure point on that barrel. But as, as much as this thing flexes, look at that. It's not. The, hey, what's the, the point of having a pressure point on something that's a moving target? Yeah, it, that's why we took it out. The uh, barrels need to be free floated. But now, I mean, now at least it's consistent. It's bigger, but it's consistent. Yep. Before they were small and big, and just all over the place. Okay. Chassis. What's your three. prediction on this one? How? How? Okay. This is number one. How small can it go? Can we get half a more out of it? Oh, definitely. I really? Think, I think we'll, we'll get there. As it, if we put a tuner brake on that, then we're going to be able, one, we're going to be able to tune factory ammunition uh, to the rifle. And plus we're getting recoil management. For less brake, recoil. Less yeah. recoil. So now it's going, like your follow through, your accuracy, it's all going to come together more. Okay. And then I guess after that, so I guess trigger would be more, I mean, for you, I mean, you've shot thousands, hundreds of thousands of rounds, right? So a heavy trigger, you can deal with it. Okay. Uh, a, a light trigger would be more of a comfort thing at this point, right? It definitely is. It's, it's a, shooting a heavy trigger is fun because now you have to think about it. Easy pressure, am I pulling straight back? You get a light trigger, it's, it's more pressure, depending on how light you set it. Yeah. It's, yeah. At a certain point, it's just how much it's the weight of your finger touching it that sets it off. But with the heavy trigger, you have to be conscious of: Am I pulling this straight back? Am I inducing a left or right error? What, how am I, how's my trigger pull? Right. So it was actually kind of it was actually nice because that's what I was thinking about when I was shooting. Like pull straight back, pull straight back. <laughs> be surprised by the shot. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think that's it. So you're predicting half a MOA. Oh, definitely. What about this one? How, without, just with the chassis, you think it'll change or you think it'll just stay the same? Good news on this. If we leave it how it is, that's that's how it is. That's not terrible. It's not terrible. Uh, better news is we know we can slap a chassis on it. And, and I mean, again, at worst, we're gonna stay the same. But more yeah. comfortable. But more comfortable. More enjoyable to shoot. Uh, you know, at, if we get lucky, the chassis improves. I think it's going to because it is. There's a night and day difference, just in how it feels throughout the whole cyclic action of getting on the gun, addressing the target, your trigger squeeze, that the whole recoil management, everything follow through into your next shot. It is a whole different animal. Well, good. Oh, uh, barrel cleaning. That was another one they were asking. There's 25 rounds on these barrels now. And they were cleaned after 10. That's what we shot last time. They'll be cleaned again after 15, which yep. that was shot this time. So we're cleaning them every time. Down to bare metal. We're not leaving anything behind. We don't care that they're factory. We, we clean the same every time. Our, our cleaning regime, it's the same for any gun. Yes. All right. Come back next time. <laughs> uh, Part three. This, this is getting pretty, uh, pretty crazy pretty fast. Cause anyway, so... That one is already without the scope. What's the, well, what's the price tag on this one already? 11, 1200. 1200, 
minus this, you know, nothing up here. 1200 bucks versus 600, 650. 650. <sighs> look at this. It's flexing, you can see it flexing. And look at, look, look how big this, look how much wider that bipod is. And look, look at the flex on this thing. Anyway, all right, <laughs> see you next time. 6.5 needs more. <laughs> this one needs more than that now. They both need more. <laughs> Just a little less on this one. <laughs> Keep them centered. See it.